I'm, uh, my name is Father Ed Feliski. I'm a Redemptorist priest speaking to you from St. Clement Mission House in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Today, um, we celebrate the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And I would like to begin my reflection with the opening prayer taken from today's liturgy. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wheels the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus speaks to us um, of the kingdom of God quite often. In fact, it's the theme that he uses um, and preaches most about. In fact, in Matthew's gospel alone, Jesus uses the term kingdom of God, reign of God, kingdom of heaven, over 50 times. He's constantly speaking to us about the kingdom of God. Today, he uses two images. Um, two parables, if you will, to speak of the kingdom of God. Um, one about the farmer who plants his seed and doesn't know how the seed grows. He goes to bed at night, wakes up every day, and one day the seed begins to grow. Um, it's the mystery of, of um, seed. The second parable he uses is the seed of, um, or rather the, um, the parable of um, the mustard seed, um, the smallest of all seeds that goes into the ground and becomes this large bush where the birds of the sky can make their nests and live. When I was a novice 37 years ago, 1986, um, I was making an eight-day directed retreat in a place called Wernersville here in Pennsylvania. And I heard a story about the kingdom of God that has stayed with me all these years. It's a, a parable, if you will, of, of the kingdom of God. It's another image that Jesus used um, when he spoke of the kingdom of God. And I'd like to share that with you today. Once upon a time, there was a pearl merchant who made his living by traveling up and down the coast of the Indian Ocean, looking for pearls that he could purchase and then resell. Um, and he would buy his pearls from oyster farmers, um, men who would grow oysters at the bottom of the bay, hoping that um, within those oysters they might find a pearl or two. Most of their oysters were used um, or were sold to restaurants and to seafood houses. Um, one day the merchant 
um, came across this old man. He was an old farmer who was very uh, welcoming, very kind, and they became good friends. And over the course of time, um, every time that the merchant was in the area, he would, he would stop by just to visit with this old farmer, oyster farmer. And the oyster farmer always wore a pouch around his neck. Um, and one day, while the merchant was visiting, he took the pouch from around his neck, and out of the pouch he took um, one pearl, and he put it in the palm of his hand. And he showed it to the merchant, and the merchant was mesmerized. It was the most beautiful pearl that he'd ever seen. It was a black pearl, and it was beautiful in every way. Um, and as the light from the sun glistened off the surface of the pearl, it reminded the merchant of the old man's face. And possession was the only desire in his heart. So right away he offered the old man a price for the pearl. But the old man simply responded, I'm sorry, my friend, this pearl has no price. So he left saddened, but every time that he was in the area, he would go out of his way to visit with the old man and make a higher offer for that pearl. Um, but always, the answer was always the same. The answer was always, I'm sorry, my friend, but this pearl has no price. Well, the merchant became so obsessed by the thought of possessing that pearl that he decided that he was going to give everything he had in exchange for that pearl and he made his way to the old man's house. And as he was coming up the road to make his offer, the old man came out from the house and he met his friend on the road and he took the pouch from around his neck and he gave it to his friend. And he said, my friend, I give you the pearl. Well, the merchant was shocked. He said, I was coming here today to offer you everything I have in exchange for this pearl and you give it to me for nothing. Why? The old man said, you see, my friend, this pearl has no price. The pearl was retrieved by my son, who had to dive so deep into the bay that upon his return he was caught in a current and his lungs burst. And this pearl was in this pouch around his neck when we pulled his body from the sea. And that's why the pearl has no price and I give it to you for nothing. I love that story because it's the story of our salvation. It's the story of the kingdom of God. Um, the pearl of great price is our salvation, won for us by the life of the Son of God, who dove so deep into the human condition um, in order to save us from our sinfulness and restore us to God's fullness of God's life. Um, so I love that story, and I love the image of the kingdom of God. When we think of kingdoms, it's a sort of a foreign term for us today. Um, we don't really live in kingdoms. We're more um, familiar with democracies, where people are elected to, to leadership positions. Um, but at the time, uh, in the ancient world, kingdoms were a reality, and uh, People, the first listeners of these stories of Jesus would certainly have identified with them. And when Jesus uses that term kingdom, and he, he refers to it in, in terms of God, um, the kingdom of God is everywhere, of course. God's kingdom is in the geographical kingdom defined by um, a certain geographic area. Rather, the kingdom of God is everywhere because God is the king, king of kings and Lord of lords. And, and so today we celebrate um, this wonderful image of the kingdom of God that Jesus shares with us. And I pray that you will journey on your journey to this kingdom. I pray that you will experience God's presence with you on every step of that journey. May God bless you and may you have a wonderful day. And I thank you for joining me today in this Redemptorist online preaching program. And I invite you to um, return again next week as we listen to Father Bob Harrison as he proclaims um, the Word of God for the 12th Sunday in ordinary time. God bless you. I'd like to conclude now with the closing prayer 
for today's liturgy. As the, the reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace.